everyone. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. Welcome. Today we're going to try a live stream again. Oh, it looks pretty good so far. All right. Thank you for being here. And uh, I tried to do this last week and it didn't work for some reason. So we're going to do it all over again. We're going to talk about motion in music today. Motion in music, it's, um, once you become aware of it, then you will be aware of it more and more and more. Have you ever, uh, I don't know, sometimes guys like to do this, they like to look at uh, cars and things like that. And when I became aware of Teslas and started to study more about them, I started to see them on the road, which I never saw them before. Now, I live in a place in Idaho, it's more rural, and I don't see a lot of Teslas out here because uh, there's no charging stations. And uh, But in the city, when I go to the city, I see Teslas there. Also motorcycles, I, I've ridden motorcycles before uh, at different times in my life, Hondas, Harleys, that kind of thing. And when you become aware of something, you start to see them all the time. Oh, look, there's a Harley over there. <laughs> look, there's one over there. My wife's like, what, what? Okay, so, we're going to talk about motion in music today, and if you don't want to know about motion in music, then uh, you better click out of this right away because you will start to become more aware of it uh, as we talk about it. So I just started playing this song here, right? And we're going to talk about motion in that and a couple of other very popular uh, songs that even um, you know young children know. Uh, if I play this, right? How many people will say, oh, I know what that is. Oh, thank you, Dean. <laughs> Video and audio are very good. Excellent. Glad to know that. Thank you for letting me know. Smoke on the water. I have people, uh, boys that are like nine, ten years old. I want to learn smoke on the water. Oh, okay. So we start them off or very simply. Sometime on one string. Oops, sorry. So, but really what it does is this. Now this is a G string and a D string open at the same time. Those are called perfect fourths. Like that, that's a perfect fourth. And so we're playing the D string and G string open, and then we go up to the third fret and play them together, and then we go up to the fifth fret, and then we go open, three, six, five, open, three, five, three, open, and that's the whole beginning part of Smoke on the Water. Now let's talk a little bit about motion and what that means. You'll notice right here on the screen, I'm just going to go ahead and cover up my face so that you can see this really well. Um, you'll notice that I've got two parallel lines. These are like uh, railroad tracks. When you look at a, a pair of railroad tracks, they go in parallel. And when the train moves, they have to move together so that the train can move along it. Well, this is what having two notes move together the same direction is called parallel motion. So these notes are in parallel motion. Now if I just did this, that would still be parallel motion, even though they're not like moving, but they're doing the same thing. Now if I did this, oops, so if I went, let's see, I did that wrong. That's still parallel motion because they're both moving in the same direction. The two notes are moving up, perfect fourth, and then I went up to a perfect fifth, and then I went down to a perfect fifth again but they're moving in the same direction, so that's called parallel motion. Okay, so on the real song, there's a bass note that comes in, just like that, right? So now we know a little bit about what parallel motion is. 
Now let's go to oblique motion. Oblique motion is when you have a note. A note that's not moving or holding and another one that's moving up or down. Okay, so if I was doing this. I'm playing that low G note, and I'm playing the D string open, and then I'm playing the third fret, fifth fret, third fret, open. That's called oblique motion because one of the notes is not moving. So in this song, we've got parallel motion, then the bass comes in. When it's going like this, then we've got oblique motion between those two parallel notes and the bass note. That's called oblique motion. So the, the oblique motion and the parallel motion work together. It's pretty cool. All right, now that we know about oblique and parallel, let's go to the third kind of motion. Contrary motion. Contrary motion is when you have two notes that are moving in different directions. So they're either coming together or they're going apart. So, here, let me do something on the piano and let you know what contrary motion is. So that's contrary motion. I've got notes that are coming down and I've got notes that are going up. Or I could go the other direction. That would be contrary motion also. Okay, so notes that are going in different directions. So what's interesting here? Let's use my first example. Oh, I gotta turn on my guitar. Okay, that piece of music right there Stairway to Heaven, right? The outer notes, right there at the beginning, the bass note is going from that note, going down by half step or one fret. Let me get my tuner out here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've got an A, going to a G sharp, going to a G, and then this, got an A, so those are both A's. The next note is a B, going to a C. So it's an A on the bottom, A on the top, G sharp to B, G to a C. but the inside notes are staying the same. And then we hit these two notes together. So those notes stayed the same and then. So we've got contrary motion happening on the outside notes. And we've got oblique motion happening between the other notes. Then we got parallel motion, but they're hitting one at a time, and those all notes, all those notes go down. Now, depending on how you hit this, I've seen it several different ways. The notes here, if I play a G note here and a B note here, and then the outer notes on that A minor chord and just the A, E, A like that, then we've got contrary motion going from those notes to those notes. Pretty cool, huh? Let's play it again. Okay, like that. Here, Dean asks, 
do songwriters purposely build in motion to their pieces or does it happen by happenstance? Do they get style points for using all three? <laughs> that's, that's a really good question. And we've got somebody else coming in and you give me Copa Mani Copi. Uh, I think you're from Indonesia, I can tell. I can't tell who you are. A at sign N. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Okay, um, I have to say that some writers do it purposely and some writers do it uh, unconsciously. Although we can tell when something sounds good, right? If I do this, like that, I can tell what that sounds like. That's an F going to a G going to an A. If I do this, oops, I did the wrong chord. F, G, A. That sounds different than this. Let's use that bar chord first to this G to an A. Right? That sounds different for sure, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, let's go to another example. Maybe by looking at this on the screen, you may not know what this uh, piece of music is. It's in my book, Coil Studios Music Lead Sheets. Um, I'll play it for you, and you might be able to recognize it. Let's see. How, let me do that again. Oops, wrong, wrong note. No, that is the right note. Sorry. There it goes. Oh, I didn't practice very much this morning, did I? Let's do it one more time. So what, what song is that? Here we go. Blackbird, Paul McCartney, Beatles, you probably recognize it. So this part right here, this is the... Now on the screen, you'll notice that I've marked the outer notes right there. And so what we've got between the three and the five, we've got parallel motion going down to two and three. I'm, I'm talking about the lowest note to the highest note. Three and five to two and three, two and open, that's parallel motion each time. Now we have contrary motion between the D string and that C note right there, the first string, first fret on the B string and then parallel motion going to there. There we go. Now, I just changed this, so look at it very carefully. Now I'm looking at the drone string. So what we've got here is oblique motion going from that third to the second open, parallel motion. And then we've got parallel motion. Let's see, that's oblique motion right there. Going back to oblique and then parallel. Now when you listen to it all together, I'm willing to bet that when Paul McCartney wrote this piece, now I've heard him say that he was thinking about box beret and uh, thinking about uh, maybe patterning, patterning a song after something like that. And so that's what he came up with. And there's certain aspects of that song that you can hear that sound very good. And there's a certain kind of a style involved. So when you have contrary motion and oblique motion and parallel motion, those three different kinds of motion, you can tell that it's a different style than if you just use, you know, all bar chords going all different, the same directions. Right? That sounds totally different than if I were to do it with open position chords. Okay, so, here, let's take that off. Let's use a hymn arrangement here, and this is... Um, This is called O Savior Thou Who Wearest a Crown. 
J.S. Bach actually adapted this. It's also called O Sacred Head Now Wounded. And I'm going to play it. I'm going to stand up and play it with the keyboard, and I want you to listen to it. All right, hold on just a second. There you go. Now, when you listen to something like that, you can tell that it's not pop music, right? There's oblique motion, oblique, oblique, and then oblique, oblique again, parallel, parallel, contrary, oblique, 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 and then parallel. So all of these different kinds of motion are there. Okay? And when someone is writing a hymn or arranging a hymn, we actually think about these things very, very carefully. You have to... Now, there's four different uh, voices. The top voice is called the soprano, the next voice is called the alto, the next voice is called the tenor, the next voice is called the bass. And so there's four different voices, and you, s you compare the top two voices to each other, the top voice with the tenor, the top voice with the bass, and you compare every voice to every other voice to make sure that there are nothing, there's nothing called parallel octaves that go like this. Right? You don't want that, and you don't want perfect fifths that go... You don't want perfect fifths that do that. And when I first started um, arranging hymns like that, four-part chorale things, um, pieces, I could not hear those parallels. And after a while, I could. When I was writing them, I go, oh, I can hear that. There's a parallel going on there. The parallel octaves or the parallel um, fifths, like that. But I couldn't hear them at the beginning but I could hear them later. So this is something that is uh, that you can learn to do and you can recognize very, very quickly. Now, when we're writing music, when we're arranging music, and I do this all the time when I'm arranging a piece of music, I make a decision about what I want to do. Oh, your brain hurts. Three motions, four voices. My brain hurts. <laughs> yeah, well, it's very technical. Okay, let's go to... Let's go to one more example here with some chords on the guitar. All right, I'm putting them big on the screen. You can't see me, obviously. I'm going to play the first. You'll notice there's a C, F, G, A, and then there's another measure that says C, F, G, A. So I'm going to play the first one. Okay, those are all bar chords. C, F, G, A. I'll show you in just a minute what it looks like when I take this uh, off the screen. Now let's play the second measure. Okay, that sounds different. Open C chord, bar chord, G chord, A chord. All right, so this is what it looks like when I'm playing the first uh, measure with all bar chords. Okay? It's very obvious. You can see that I'm moving that pattern all the way down to the first fret, from the eighth fret, up to the third fret, up to the fifth fret, and that's parallel motion. The next one, C, F, G, A, is different. Now, why am I using these chords? Because I just did a song. <laughs> I just taught a song and uh, did the uh, cover to um, Space Oddity by David Bowie. Okay, and David Bowie plays it that way. And I 
I played it this way. And it has a different sound, and I decided to do it this way because I didn't want all that parallel motion. Although, sometimes it sounds pretty good. So, let's analyze this really quickly. The two notes on the outside, on that C chord, the C and the E, and then going down to, that's actually contrary motion. So I've got the C chord, and then the outer notes are contrary motion, and then it's parallel motion, and then it's contrary motion again. Because the bass note goes up to A, and the G note goes down to E. Okay? And so there's some oblique motion and some parallel motion and contrary motion all in in that chord progression as opposed to all parallel motion in this chord progression. Okay? Now somebody might say, well, I like all that parallel motion. And I do too, actually. And I actually like this too. It depends on what you want to communicate to, to the, your listener. Let's look at uh, Dean Harrington says, Bowie's version sounds muddy to me. Yours sounds bright. See? Okay, so there's somebody's opinion about my version about what I did with those chords as opposed to the other chords. You know, it's really uh, objective, and uh, everybody has a different opinion about that. Well, that's the three different kinds of motion that I have to show to you today. Parallel, right? And uh, oblique. Here, let's put those on the screen one more time. Parallel motion, where notes always move uh, together in the same direction. Not always exactly the same amount, but at least in the same direction. Oblique motion, when one is staying the same. That's oblique motion, too. And then contrary motion, when you have notes that are moving in different directions. Like that. Let's go to the next slide because this is my the cover of the Quail Studios Music and Lead Sheets book. Thanks for coming along. <laughs> you can get this over at uh, Subscribestar or at Patreon, or you can use the link in the description to make a do donation, and I will send it the link to you and also give you updates through 2021, through December. And uh, also, one more thing, another way you can help to uh, support the channel is to use or to go over and see Savvy at Simple Joy Earrings. She's got an Instagram page, and she's selling earrings over there. And uh, you can support her and support me at the same time. Here's just some examples. Just thought I'd throw a plug in there for that. Thank you very much for being here. All right. We'll talk to you later. Take care. See ya. Bye.